Hey everybody, it's time for a weekly news dump. Yeah. Now we know it's odd since both of us see movies so frequently, but for whatever reason, neither Elliot nor myself have tried that movie pass thing. Mm -mm. I don't know if it maybe seemed too good to be true to me yes. or, or that I felt I would risk miss seeing a movie that I really wanted to see because maybe a certain theater didn't accept it or you know, any uh, number of reasons. All of my theaters don't accept it at all. So my main hang up personally was the fact that I like to book my tickets well in advance and pick the seats at the theater that I want to go to. A luxury, sure, but damn it, if I'm gonna sacrifice a good portion of my day to a film, I do it my way. Still, MoviePass is incredibly enticing for people who love movies but are sick of handing over 10 to $20 per ticket every time they want to see something. Especially if they're seeing at least a few movies a month. Mm -hmm. That shit adds up. Yes. So the deal you get with MoviePass, as many of you are already aware of, is for $10 a month you can see one standard 2D movie every day for that month. You have to check into the movie that you want to see at a theater that accepts it, and you literally have to be on site to activate the pass for that specific movie. Yeah, it tracks like within a hundred feet of the theater. To yeah, let you know that you're there. But I mean, if you're at a shopping center, a place that has a yeah. theater built in, there you it's go. A pretty casual way to do it. I, I yeah, outside of that, it. it Kind of seems like a hassle, but again, it's a hell of a deal for someone who sees a lot of movies and doesn't care about landing a perfect seat or seeing the film in an enhanced format like 3D, IMAX, or Dolby Atmos. Or even seeing the movie they plan to see. Sure, just roll the dice. Yeah, boss baby, sure. Also, I'll be completely honest, I'm not sure how it works if you go with friends who do or don't have a movie pass. Maybe it's easier to find seats in other parts of the country, but here in LA, I feel like if it's a new release, you might not be able to sit together. Which, you know, that's also fine too when it comes down to it because you shouldn't be talking to each other during the movie anyway. Yeah. You jerks. What are you doing? Also, apparently the biggest, uh, the biggest hassle involved is that you have to go to the electronic kiosk mm -hmm. to get your ticket. Oh. You can't go to the box office. And those kiosk lines get real long. People, they end up being late. Yeah. Because they didn't plan. True. But anyway, it turns out the whole movie pass thing might actually be too good to be true. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> so if you're using it or plan to use it, you should get in and watch your movies now. Because if their finances don't improve soon, it'll be a quick death for this company. Mm -hmm. The owner of movie pass, which is called Helios and Matheson Analytics, because that's how they're making the little bit of money they make. Sure. They claimed that during an audit, they've lost... Uh, $150 million in 2017, yeah. which was up from just around $7 million the previous year, mostly due to its acquisition of MoviePass, which, according to The Wrap, has apparently lost money since its inception all the way back in 2011. What do you mean this costs more money than it makes? Who could have thought? Guys, we're just waiting on the laws of economics and physics Come to around. change, and then we're, we're in good. the green, baby. Uh, in their reporting, they said that, quote, the company's auditors believe there is a significant risk that MoviePass won't be able to achieve the objectives needed, increasing subscribers, finding additional sources of revenue and economies of scale to achieve and sustain profitability. Quoting the filing that was made by their parent company to the Securities and Exchange Commission, they said that MoviePass currently spends more to retain a subscriber than the revenue derived from that subscriber, and MoviePass's other sources of revenue are currently inadequate to offset or exceed the costs of subscriber retention. That's what the filing said. This results in a negative gross profit margin. There is no assurance that MoviePass will be able to sufficiently increase its other sources of revenue or be able to achieve economies of scale that would reduce the cost of revenue sufficiently to generate a positive gross profit margin. Who could have predicted this? It's almost like you could have just got out a crystal ball, made a couple guesses, and seen this. I got seen a great idea for a company. We just give food away for free. Yeah. And then we'll become the hottest restaurant in America. Yeah. And the profits will come. Well, oh, you know, yeah. We'll figure it out. Anyway, this all coincides with the seemingly rocky relationship that MoviePass already has with one of the largest theater chains in America, AMC. They've already cut down the amount of AMC theaters that they can work with, mostly the busiest locations. And despite AMC not being entirely on board with MoviePass in the first place, the subscription service recently asked for a cut of AMC's profits from other aspects of the movie-going experience as well. Mm -hmm. A deadline reported on this back in January saying, MoviePass has reportedly asked AMC for a slice of admissions and concessions given the foot traffic it sends to AMC, which is around $2 million a week per MoviePass insiders. MoviePass is seeking a $3 cut on AMC tickets that it covers, plus 20% of concessions. AMC boss Adam Aaron said in an earnings call late last year, AMC has absolutely no intention, I repeat, no intention of sharing any, I repeat, 
any of our admissions revenue or concessions revenue with MoviePass, and they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> you added that last part, but he didn't seem very intent on making a point. They can kiss my ass. <laughs> they can kiss my fucking ass. Like, he might as well have just come out and said that. Like, you know what? Fuck you! MoviePass. <laughs> It's the Why best. don't you suck my dick? <laughs> I love how this was in a conference to shareholders too. Like, don't worry, we're gonna fuck this company. <laughs> oh, I repeat, you can kiss my ass. Uh, now, in spite of all of this, executives at uh, MoviePass itself say that they could reach profitability as soon as 2019 if all goes well. Uh, but based on what we've seen over the past few months, it's hard to count on that, especially since it's apparent that the theaters themselves <laughs> And putting this lightly, aren't very keen on the idea a lot of the time. Now, it, it works out in, the, in them for the sense that it's getting people in seats, as tickets are the slimmest margin for theaters, and by getting people in the theater, they will hopefully spend money at concessions, which is where a lot of theaters turn most of their profit. But with MoviePass attempting to strong arm uh, that side of the business, it might be a big uphill battle for the service. You know, you want to solve this, just start, get a fucking beer license. Yeah. Oh, you make so much money. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have MoviePass, let us know what you like and don't like in the comments and just try to change our minds on the whole thing. The part I like about it is that this company is just fucking <laughs> giving shit away <laughs> yeah. for no reason as a no, customer with no benefit to themselves. Yeah, they're yeah. selfless. As a customer, I will bleed them dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, imagine if this company went use on Shark it before Tank. You lose it. Yeah, hey, guys. Mark, Mark Cuban, who owns Landmark Theaters, by the way, kiss but, my ass. <laughs> I repeat, kiss my ass. Yeah, they would come out and be like, "Hey, this is our idea. It's movie pass." And Mark Cuban, get the fuck out of my tank. Feed him to the sharks. <laughs> put him in the tank. That's yeah. that's what they do on the show. They put the bad ones in the tank. Yeah, and then they get devoured. Yeah. Ah, all right. Well, let's take a side trip into the world of gaming news for a second, because people seem to like it when we brought gaming into the mix on last week's episode. So here's some news about that new Call of Duty that you might find interesting or infuriating. Mm -hmm. So there's been a whole lot of leaks this week regarding the upcoming Call of Duty Black Ops 4, which is due to drop later this year. And it seems to be a real Frankenstein's monster of the latest trends in gaming. Right out the gate, there are reports that it's dropping the single player campaign entirely and will instead focus solely on the multiplayer experience in zombies mode. Also, allegedly, it was because they ran out of time. Yeah. Also, it's still gonna cost you $60. Because unlike MoviePass, <laughs> we sell you less and ask for more. Exactly. Now, in addition to not having a single player mode, you better believe that they're working on a goddamn Battle Royale mode for this game because of the meteoric rise in popularity of that game style. So this rumor comes from Charlie Intel and Eurogamer, who say that their sources backed up the report about the inclusion of a Battle Royale mode. Adding context, <sighs> our source said COD's Battle Royale mode may not hit the magic 100 player mark seen in other Battle Royale games at the time Black Ops 4 comes out, but the developers are working towards that number. Meh. Some fucking executive like kicked in the door four months ago like, <laughs> guys, delete all the files. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. <laughs> We're gonna get on this Fortnite train. Yeah. Can you make a big balloon with a skull on it? We're gonna need, get the fuck off designing the campaign. Stop we need cosmetic, the campaign. cosmetic items. <laughs> cosmetic microtransaction items. Yes. Now. Yes. So anyway, the other big rumor floating around, this one being completely unverified, zero confirmed, comes from a Twitter user claiming that Black Ops 4's multiplayer is more similar to Overwatch than the previous titles, claiming that, quote, sources who have play tested the mode claim that it is less like a Call of Duty mode and more like a Call of Duty Overwatch or a Call of Duty Lawbreakers. And we all saw how that turned out. Yeah. Well, uh, if we know one thing for certain about the upcoming Call of Duty, it's that regardless of what you can or can't do in the game, or which modes will be included, it'll be completely unplayable for at least the first week, because they pretty much always, without fail, fuck up their servers and make it impossible to play consistently. Every fucking year. So, hey, at least we have that to look forward to. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's get back to movies, though. Yeah, okay. Uh, are you one of the dozen or so people who, when the topic of a movie called Mask comes up, says, ha, which one, Jim Carrey or Rocky Dennis? Guilty. Well, uh, you're about to get another surefire joke added to your repertoire because we're getting another Mask movie. Smoking! <laughs> no. Oh, look up! No, 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 no. Somebody stop me! I got a very bad disease <laughs> in my face. <laughs> Uh, this one 
Sorry, Elliot, it has nothing to do with a cursed relic that turns you into a character from a Tex Avery cartoon, or craniodiaphyseal dysplasia. Is that, did I say that right? No! How do you say it? It's Latin or Greek. Uh, craniodiaphyseal dysplasia. It's the thing that Rocky Dennis you got a had. big old head. Yeah, it, it, this one is actually based on a cartoon from the 80s that was created to sell a line of toys, which is pretty much like every other cartoon from the 80s. MASK, M-A-S-K, stands for Mobile Armored Strike Command. Fuck you, god damn it. No. Yes. It, no, it's really happening, Elliot. And uh, yeah, it basically looked like a cross between G.I. Joe and Transformers, and it only lasted about two seasons, but that's not going to get in the way of Hollywood pulling every reference they can out of the 80s and turning it into an entire cinematic universe. Why are you surprised? I know it's just like, I don't even remember this. Does anyone fucking remember this? Like, I've never fucking heard of this. I remember it, but I didn't watch it, because it seemed like the discount version of G.I. Joe and Transformers. I don't know. Good job, Hollywood. So why the hell should you even care that Mask is being turned into a movie? Well, you really shouldn't until we see a trailer or something that changes their mind of the concept in its entirety. But at least they're getting started on the right foot because they've enlisted the talents of F. Gary Gray <laughs> to direct this thing? Yeah, they did. All right, I'm listening. Yeah. Now, you would obviously know F. Gary Gray from his other films like Friday, Straight Outta Compton, The Italian Job, and Fate of the Furious. So it's a great choice to, at the very least, get some good press out of the fact that this movie will apparently exist someday. And, you know, he might still just completely drop out of the project Could before happen. it ever gets made. Yeah. But they got that article posted in Variety. Now people care. Ta-da! Uh, the only it, other... It'll <laughs> most certainly be produced by Michael Bay, right? Uh, he'd have to. I think he's contra contractually obligated to Anything a, Hasbro or yeah. Hasbro or Kenner. Yeah, he, t he signed a blood oath with the devil to yeah. uh, any any toy movie. All right, how do we get a hot girl in a bikini washing a car in this film? We'll figure it out. What would Ayn Rand do? F. Gary. Can I call you Gary? No. <laughs> you gotta figure this call out. Call me F. Yeah. Uh, so the only other details provided outside of Paramount's choice of director is that Deadline says they will move quickly to set a writer to hatch a contemporary subculture movie with a youth empowerment angle. And it'll also have a battle royale mode. You can wall climb. Yeah. Uh, anyway, since we're slightly on the topic of the Fast and Furious franchise, there's also some updates about the spin-off film Hobbs and Shaw, which I'm going to be calling Calvin and Hobbs and Shaw for the rest of time. Uh, that movie obviously starring Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham. And this update comes thanks to some interviews with the film's director, David Leitch, who is currently doing press for his next movie to hit theaters, Deadpool 2. During an interview with Fandango, Leitch was asked about the spinoff and said this, It's actually been really fun starting to press this movie with Dwayne and Jason. I couldn't be happier. I've done quite a few movies with Jason as a second unit director and choreographer. I know him really well. I think what attracted me to that franchise is they really want to do something different. They understood that I wanted to sort of evolve their world outside of the fast world and give it its own imprint. You're evolving, but you're still being true to the DNA and the core of the characters that people love. I love that challenge, and doing it with Dwayne and Jason is like a dream. Those guys are hardworking, talented actors. And then also, probably after that- Fuck Vin Diesel. Yeah, <laughs> fuck Vin Diesel after that. And fuck Movie Pass. <laughs> and fuck Konami. Yeah. Uh, hey, remember Fire Festival? I know I do. Of course you do. That was the exclusive fest held in the Bahamas, put on by Ja Rule and some entrepreneur bro named Billy McFarlane who was super trustworthy. Yeah. Which crashed and burned in the most hilariously depressing way possible when the concert goers were stranded on a private island. When they were really just five minutes away from a, a Sandals resort though. Right. So don't feel too but bad. But they had to eat bread sandwiches. Yeah. And live in FEMA tents. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing fell apart. Uh, really just immediately and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it never ended up happening. Well, since that whole thing went down, Billy McFarlane has pleaded guilty to wire fraud and is currently awaiting sentencing, which could result in around eight years in prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Hulu is already hard at work with the help of Mike, Billboard, and Cinemart Theaters to bring a documentary about Fire Festival to its streaming platform. And I have never been more excited about a Hulu oh, documentary so good. since they did that documentary about uh, Big Brother magazine which was great, and you should watch, oh, and you should that. watch. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the untitled docuseries slated for 2019 series. Yeah, will examine what really happened behind the scenes and the ongoing investigation into the failed music festival that was set to take place on a private bohemian island, exposing what went wrong, who is to blame, and also claims to uncover the truth through a series of in-depth <laughs> in interviews from inside sources that range from local bohemians, uh, bohemians, I guess. Bahamians. Bah bohemians is like uh, hippies, right? Uh, yeah, it, they're interviewing local Bahamians, 
Stranded festival goers, vendors, and investors who are probably the most upset. Yeah. In addition, the docuseries will include hours of exclusive never before seen footage, leaked documents, emails, and recordings. We honestly, truthfully, couldn't be more excited for this docuseries. I'm stoked. Um, yes, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, also, real quick, before we get into trailers this week, we have to give congrats to friend of the show, Ed Skrine, who just reportedly landed a huge gig as the villain in Disney's upcoming sequel to Maleficent. Uh, there's literally no other news about the sequel, and neither of us have even seen the first one. But this is great news for Ed, who also has other films coming down the pipeline for him, including Robert Rodriguez's latest project, Alita Battle Angel. Hey, good for you, Ed. Remember when he made fun of you for not dressing up at that party? Yeah, it was great. We love you, Ed. Anyways, now we can get into trailers, starting obviously with the brand new final trailer for Deadpool 2, which shows off the X-Force in its entirety, continues to ratchet up the hype for the movie, and gives us a peek at the epic fight scenes that will play out between Deadpool and Cable. Uh, and it also throws in a great joke about Josh Brolin's double life as both, as both Thanos and Cable, for good measure. Uh, honestly, the sequel looks great. It's one of the movies that we're most excited for this year, so we're gonna see it regardless of this trailer. Sorry for showing it to you if, we're, if you were trying to not be spoiled by footage, but oops, whatever. Deadpool 2 drops on May 18th and tickets are finally on sale, so you can reserve, reserve your seats now or risk it with Movie Pass. We're not your parents. We can't tell you what you do. <sighs> if you live in the middle of nowhere and your theater accepts Movie Pass, why yeah. not say fuck you to the people that own Movie Pass yeah. and use it? Yeah. Next up is the trailer for Hotel Artemis, which is a solid looking action film with a great cast and a writer who knows his shit. It also kind of looks like a blatant John Wick ripoff, but hey, we all knew that was coming after the huge success of that franchise. Uh, regardless, here's what Hotel Artemis is about. See if you can spot the similarities from this log line synopsis. Yeah. John Thomas, AKA the nurse, Jodie Foster, is the manager of the Hotel Artemis, an ultra exclusive members only hospital hidden in a hotel redolent of faded 20s glamour. Tough, sharp, and utterly fearless, the nurse treats an assortment of assassins, gunrunners, thieves, and gangsters in an unexpected state-of-the-art emergency room capable of providing a new liver with a 3D printer or injecting a patient with nanobots that heal from the inside out. All right, that's different. Yeah. With the help of her towering assistant, Everest, the nurse wrangles some of the most dangerous criminals in the world from sultry French assassin, Nice, and international arms dealer, Acapulco, to bank robbers, Waikiki, and his brother, Honolulu. Ah, <laughs> they're all named after cities. Yeah. I get it. One night, as a violent riot rages on the streets of Los Angeles, legendary crime boss Orion Franklin, a.k.a. Niagara, nice. arrives needing immediate treatment after a failed attempt on his life. Niagara's sudden arrival creates a violent clash among the criminals in the hospital, with one patient having a particularly deadly motive for checking into the hotel. The nurse makes a decision that could jeopardize the future of the ER and everyone in it. Now, the safest place for criminals in the city has become the most dangerous. So it's like John Wick mixed with uh, like Dread or The Raid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, uh, the cast. This is what seals it, yeah. for me at least, the cast. The film also stars Dave Bautista, Sofia Batella, Jeff Goldblum, Jenny Slate, Charlie Day, Zachary Quinto, and Sterling K, K. Brown. So yeah, an absolutely incredible cast. Okay, yeah. Hotel Artemis hits theaters June 8th of 2018. Now I got a trailer for a film you might not have known about prior to watching this called Director's Cut, which is being made by Adam Rifkin, director of Detroit Rock City and The Last Movie Star. This is starring Penn Jillette. Yes, the magician guy from Penn and Teller. Mm -hmm. A Director's Cut is a movie about a film-obsessed stalker who is played by Penn Jillette and is fixated on his favorite actress, Missy Pyle. He gains access to the set of her current film by contributing to that movie's crowdfunding campaign. Once on set, he kidnaps her, steals all the footage from his, the film, and in his dungeon movie studio, he adds additional scenes of the movie, casting himself opposite his captive leading lady as the romantic hero. He takes footage from the real film and footage from his amateur production and cuts them all together into his version of a director's cut. Uh, so this looks bonkers. Yeah, the trailer is, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, no. I mean, keep right out for that. It's gonna yeah. hit select theaters on May 10th and 11th, and then it'll be on VOD and Blu-ray later that month on the 29th. It has all the makings of a cult hit, so maybe you wanna get in early. Yeah, be the one that tells your friends about it. Get in there and make your own cut. Kidnap Penn Jillette. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's just keep the snake eating itself. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's it for uh, this week. Uh, happy 420 if you're watching this on Friday. <laughs> Blaze it, or watch the Funhouse stream where they're high. Uh, and also uh, a big, a, a nice update uh, if you're watching this on Saturday or you're planning something for Saturday, it's Record Store Day. 
So if you have a record store in your hometown, go there because they're doing a bunch of exclusive uh, releases and stuff like that. It's a, it's a cool day to get you out to the record store and actually buy music, physical copies of music. Yeah. Strange. It's weird. Anyways, I'm probably gonna pick something up. But uh, yeah, check that out, it, it, it's fun. Most of your local record stores will have something going on for it. But that's it for this week. Please watch a new episode of Weekly Weird News, which is about, what did we talk about? Uh, I don't remember. Anyways, I'm not getting a lot of sleep. <laughs> yeah, me neither. It was either. something. Anyways, the new episode of Tugs, where we bully the bully hunters. And uh, we can't remember anything because we're already high. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.